And then I saw him, I've still got my ticket for the last concert he had. It's supposed to have been in Memphis. At Mid-South? At Mid-South Coliseum, okay. yeah. So what were those shows like in, in Vegas? Did he, was it just unbelievable? Oh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, they don't let people scream and cut up and everything. I mean, it's just every, everything is quiet, you know what I mean? Everybody sitting there organized. I mean, it mm -hmm. was unbelievable. I mean, of course, we had a few in there that was like that, but it's mostly, you know, grown-ups and things, you know, that was, they were, you know, just a lot of movie stars and things like that were in there. And uh, But he he, uh, he really put on a good show. I mean, it was really good. I mean, both of them were. So you have, here in your gas station, you have a lot of Elvis collectibles, and you also have some cool photographs. Let's go, let's look at some of that stuff. All righty. So I see, here's you with GK. GK. And that's a picture of him, a picture of him when it went out to the gate the last night when he died. This is you, that is that photograph that yeah. we just saw. That's Dolores Hart, Elvis and Nixon. And tell us who this is. That is uh, Julie Adams. She played in Tickle Me in the movie. And this is you and Ricky, Ricky Nelson. Nelson. He come to Tupelo. That's you and the killer. And the killer. Jerry yeah. Lee. Yeah, that was. Did you get that pick from the killer? Yeah, yeah, that was inside. No, that was somebody else's guitar pick. I accidentally I zoomed think, in. I think. But he, he, uh, he, that was made inside of his house. His, uh, his cousin made that when he was married to his cousin, mm -hmm. Jerry Lee Lewis in mm -hmm. Memphis. So that's inside which house? Is it the that's, one over in Walls? No, no, or? that's inside of me. That's in Memphis. Oh, that's in Memphis in his house yeah, in yeah, Memphis. Yeah, yeah, we went up to went up to we was in Memphis on vacation, me and my wife. Yeah. And she was a big uh, Jerry Lee fan, so we go. Uh, I found his house. I don't remember where it was, but uh, now, but we found his house, and I went up, knocked on the door, and it, that's when he was married to his cousin, uh, Myra. Myra. So we went up there and knocked on the door. She comes to the door, and it's about one o'clock one evening. And she said, uh, "I said, can we see Jerry Lee?" She said, "Is he at home?" She said, "No." I said he's downtown at an interview right now. I said, "If you'll come back about five or six o'clock this evening, you see him." I said, "Okay, you'll let us in." She said, "Yeah." So we went downtown Memphis and messed around there a while, and come back by and went up there and knocked on the door, and he come to the door. I never will forget it. He come to the door and opened the door and he had a glass of whiskey in his hand. He said, come on in, come on in. I said, okay, I'm glad to see you. And uh, he carried us in there and we, he had his gold records on the wall and there has big baby grand piano sitting there. And uh, I told him that I'd seen him a lot of times in Birmingham at the Shower Star shows. And uh, I was a big fan of his too, you know, next to Elvis, of course. And of course, Elvis number one, always will be. But, uh, and he said, yeah, I said, I used to tear up everything over there, didn't I? I said, yeah, you sure did. I said, you get mad sometimes, tear the piano stool up and knock it across the stage, get up on top of the piano, and they'd tell you if you tore anything up, you had to pay for it. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I said, it, it, was, it was some good times back then. He said, he said, I appreciate y'all coming by. I said, well, I said, uh, my wife's a real big fan of yours. And, he, he let us take some pictures around the uh, piano and, of course, one or two with him. And she did, his, his, his uh, cousin. That's when he was married to Myra. Mm -hmm. and so your wife is a bigger Jerry fan than she was an Elvis fan. Yes. But that paid off for her. So Both. You didn't, it wasn't all yeah. about you seeing that's Elvis. You got to, she got to yeah. see Jerry. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so we got, you've had some, some cool encounters and some cool stuff, and you have picture proof. Yeah. Of these encounters. Yes. I, I've been lucky. I've been, I've been fortunate. I mean, yes, I've sir. been, I guess you call it uh, the right place at the right time. Yes, sir. <laughs> so you went to Elvis's house on 7 one, one, seven, seven one. One. Mm -hmm. That's right. July the 1st, 1971. And some, some things had just happened that week. You alluded to them, but let's talk about that for a second. Elvis Presley Boulevard had just been named Elvis yes. Presley Boulevard yes. just before you went and saw it. On, on Monday. And y'all did talk about that. Yes. So you were there on a Thursday. That had happened on a Monday. The same week. So what did he say about that, or what did you say about oh, that? Oh, he, w he was tickled to death with it. He said that, uh, he said, I can't believe I'm as famous as I am. He said, they just named the street after me down here Monday. I said, well, you have no idea how famous you are. I said, everybody loves you. I said, I said, uh, 
I said, you, you just don't realize, you know, and he was tickled to death with it. I mean, he said, I just can't believe that they named that street after me in front of my house. And you uh, told me, now I haven't looked up this fact, but you said that on Wednesday, the day before, he had gotten the Grammy for How Great They Are. For How Great They Are. Yes, sir. He just got it. So man, you were there at an incredible time in his life. Mm -hmm. Those are some very big milestones. Mm -hmm. So we have Name of the Street after you, then the Grammy, mm -hmm. and then Gene Autry Gene shows Autry. up at his That's house right. with right. a badge. With a badge, <laughs> with a badge. And an incredible story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. So is it okay for fans to come by and see you? Yes. That come to Tupelo? Yes, it'd be fine. All right. What I know that we're on West Main. What's the address? 1215 West Main 1215 Street. West Main. This and is... And it's... Uh, we open from uh, 7 to 5 every day. Okay. It's up Saturday. And you do gas here? Yeah. We, and you do minor we're, work tires? We're, we're the last full service station in Tupelo. So you we actually do, pump the gas? Yeah, we do everything. Yes, wow, sir. so yes, you're sir. old school. This yes, is the sir. way it used to be. Yes, sir. Way it still should be. Yes, sir. We do everything. Gene, this Mechanic has been work. incredible, buddy. I, you don't know how incredible this story is. The fans are going to love it. I love it. And with picture proof, you can't beat picture proof. No, no. So where's the suit? The suit is hanging up in my... Uh, in my closet. In your closet? <laughs> You're proud of that. I still, that I still is got it. Awesome. And I hadn't worn it since. But I tell you what I did though, I tried it on about a year or two ago and it comes to the coat comes to about right here. It won't wrap around. <laughs> yes, sir. See I put on Hey, uh, we were all a little bit smaller <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> but but it fit perfect. I mean it was it was uh it was uh Hey, you look good at it. Let's look at it again. And I had my arm around him. You see my hand yes, right there? Yes, sir. I walked around in that house with my arm around him all the way through the house. Just like that? Yeah, with my, with my hand coming out by the side of his <laughs> waist. And he, he got so tickled at me, though. I mean, he, it was incredible. He, he, he got as big, big a kick out of seeing me as I did him, I believe. That is absolutely incredible. But, I mean, he, he was, uh, I mean, it was just a dream come true for me. I mean, I had dreamed of meeting him all my life, and I watched him all the way from the time he started. I mean, I just clicked with him, you know. I mean, I just, I mean, he was just number one. I mean, all the way through. Yes, sir. Still is. And still is. So let me ask you this. Now, you were 79 years old. Yes. So you were about four years younger than Elvis, five years five younger years. than Elvis. Five years. And so did you go to Milo? No, I, I didn't know him when he lived in Tupelo. Okay. The only time I, I really got intact with him is when he moved to Memphis and he started, uh, made his first record at uh, Sun Studios. Okay. But did you go, where did you go to school here? Different school? I went to Lawhorn. Okay, so different part of town, is that? Yeah, he okay. went to Lawhorn. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. But I went to Lawhorn. Later. And I, and I, went, I started at Church Street down here. And then I... My dad was always moving us around and everything. I didn't know, never know where I was going to live from one day to the next, you know. But we lived in Verona for a while, and we lived in East Tupelo for a while, and then we finally settled in South Tupelo. Well, you know, they moved around. Uh, in yeah. 13 years, they moved 13 times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that seems to be, have been a thing back then mm -hmm. in Tupelo. Yes. Of course, people didn't have the kind of money they do today. No, no. Uh -uh. Yeah. And it was told that his dad uh, told that he couldn't, make it in Tupelo, so they said uh, going to Memphis would be a, it had to be better than Tupelo, you know, when they got to Memphis. And they were right. And yeah, I mean it, you know. So what was it like living here and the somebody that was poor here, that everybody knew was poor, came back as a superstar? What did that feel like? Did that get, that, that has to give you hope. Yeah. So tell us what that was like as a teenager seeing him at well, this concert. well, I mean, he had a dream. He's like everybody else. He, he uh, a dreamer, you know, like uh, people in the movies and things. He had a dream and he fulfilled it. I mean, he he uh, kept on at it, you know, so to speak. And he he didn't. I don't think he had any idea he was going to be as famous as he is today, I mean, or as famous as he was when he's living. You know, I don't think that was even uh, feasible for him. I don't think. But I mean, he would be tickled to death if he could see what kind of shape he's in today. I mean, if the followers that he's got, I mean, it's incredible. It, it truly and, is. I mean, all the way to Germany, to England, or or where, Tokyo, or wherever. They come here from everywhere. 
and, uh, and Memphis and Memphis. I mean, and I want them to come see you when they come. Is that cool? Yes, that's cool. All yes, right. I would be glad to see them. I, I would be glad to show them my hospitalities. Yes, sir. Well, friends, this is my friend Gene Autry Turner. He went to Graceland. How many of you would love to be in that picture? with Elvis inside the front door of Graceland, presenting him with the badge, walking through the house, looking at the stuff. I, I'm speechless. I, 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 it, it blo this blows my mind. I am so glad that we ran into you. John Daly, thank you for this. You talked to John Daly yesterday, and yes. John said, hey, you gotta talk to this guy. Yes, sir. And uh, so if it wasn't for John Daly, we wouldn't know about Gene Autry Turner. Right. Stop by and see Gene, friends, when you're in uh, Tupelo. God bless you, my friend. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for this. Yes, sir. He tightened up and saw Elvis. <laughs> you went to, you said, MLM on Main Street. No, on, on Spring Street. On Spring Street. They're still there. They're still there, MLM. But it's new owners. It's okay. not the same But it's owner. still the name. Yeah, same MLM. Name. And it was on, it was, it was, uh, that suit was in the window. When I went in there and yeah. I told him, I said, that's exactly what I want to see, that I want to see Elvis. But, but you didn't tell him, you no, told him special I said to myself. Oh, okay. I said, that's what, that's what I want right there. But you were working the, today, this day. Yes. Tell us about that. I, w I was working at Mills Morris Company in Tupelo uh, as a counter salesman, parts, auto parts. I worked for that. I worked there for 17 years. But you got off early that day. Oh yeah, I took off early that day, yeah. So what was the drive from here to Memphis like? Were you it, nervous? Oh yes, yes. <laughs> two, so, two, a little over two hours. And you pull up to the gate. And, and the gate opens and they let us in, you know, and we park in the front door. So somebody else was with you? Yes. Who else? A friend of mine. Oh, okay. That, that got us in. Okay. Yeah, and uh, she, uh, uh, they, they uh, opened the door, like I said, and we went in. And I where did you park? Just in, in front of the in house? In the front door. Okay. Yeah, right there. You know, the, they don't let you go up there now in a car. I mean, you got to go up in them buses. Yeah. Things. But but we went up. Uh, the gate opened. I mean, you know how he, many people he were killed was, to be able to drive up there in their car? He was expecting us. Yeah. I mean, you know, he told them to let us in, you know. He was expecting us. But uh, it was uh, it, it was magic. I mean, it was, I mean, I had to. I had to thank, you know, for a long time, I said, after it was over with, I said, I can't believe that I've been and met Elvis Presley. I, I just, I had to pinch myself and talk to myself and everything, and I said, I just can't believe that I have been to see Elvis Presley in person without going through all the rigmarole. And this is 40, what's 46, 47 years later, and it's, is it still, it's still surreal to it's you? Still. It's still just like he's here, but you know what has made him, what has what has kept him going, is when he was famous, they didn't nobody ever see him. He didn't get out and expose himself in front of people and everything. I mean, he stayed hid, and he was a mystery to everybody. You know, he 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 didn't uh, he didn't expose himself. And and a man told me, a, a singer told me one time, he said the biggest thing that a that a entertainer does or or actor does is overexpose himself. And he said Elvis has kept himself hid. And I mean, he was just like somebody in prison. But in that house that he lived in, he had everything he needed. I mean, he didn't need to go nowhere. But if, if like I said, if, if he had been overexposed, he probably wouldn't have never been where he'd been, you know. Which, that's, uh, that's uh, a credit to the colonel. Yeah, a credit to the yeah. colonel. He kept him here. Yeah, he knew how to make him how to a mystery him. and make how, him how to promote him and everything. Yeah, you know. So friends, we kept talking, <laughs> and now we've stumbled across something else. So when they built the chapel, they built a chapel where the birth house is. Yes. They have the museum, but they built a chapel on the side. The the church is there. Yes. But there's also a chapel a there. A chapel. And you sponsored people could sponsor pews in there. Yes. So you and your wife and daughter sponsored a pew. Yes. And then they took, tell us about this Bible. They had the, fa the family Bible. Uh, Vernon, I guess, gave them the family Bible. And they got a podium up there, and it's, and it's got an open uh, 
open place for it, you know, where you can see it. You know, I mean, it's but it's covered. It's up. viewed. It's covered up. Yeah. Right. And when they set that Bible in there, the pages in that Bible started turning. And it and it, I mean, it was incredible. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I and mean, you were there. I was there. I How was, many I other it. people were there that witnessed that? Oh, I don't know. There was a bunch of us there. But I, I mean, when they had the grand opening. But I mean, it was it was unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. I sat there and looked at it, and I said, I said, I just can't believe this. So the pages were just flipping. They were just flipping. Nobody around it. Nobody around it. I mean, and it was sealed. It was supposed to be sealed. It was sealed up in a plastic thing, you know, a counter like thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's still out there. I haven't been out there lately, but I'm sure it's still there. That's an incredible story. It, I'm gonna have to go look at that. But it was it was turning the pages and it was turning inside of inside of after the, the after it was the glass up, was over it after it was sealed up it was turning the pages in the Bible, and you know he was real religious too. I mean he he believed in the Lord and and he loved Jesus. He loved Jesus. I saw and he knew the Bible uh, from uh, from all the accounts I've ever seen from cover to cover. I mean he knew you know. Uh, where he was and who made him and everything and I mean he was he, he knew why he was here. And if you can't get that right, friends, you can't get anything. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. the most important he thing. He believed in the Lord, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. He did. Very cool. Man, that's an incredible story. So I'm gonna have to go by there and look at that. The last time I went the chapel was closed. It was being remodeled again. Yeah. So I need to go in there and take a look. I think they were having some water issues or something mm -hmm. like that, some roof leaks. So I'll stop by there while I'm in town and take a take a sneak peek at that too. And when it's building, it, you know, they had a lot of donations. They had uh, uh, all kind of people, you know, buying pews and to get it built. And you sponsored a pew. Uh, one of the pews, yes, yes, sir. sir. Very cool. Thank I you, did. Gene. I did. Yes, sir. Thank you. You love Elvis, don't you, brother? I do. Yes, sir. I will till they put me down. Yes, sir. <laughs> I will till they put me down. <laughs> Believe me. So I went to the uh, birthplace, the birth house, and I went to the chapel. And you see these pews in here with names on them. And I want you to look right here. Gene Altry, Carolyn, and Casey Turner, just like he said. This is a chapel that they had built in 1979 by the fans. A place you can go see. So friends, I want to recap the badges. This is the original badge that Elvis was given by the Lee County Sheriff. And they decided they wanted to do a better badge than this. This is the kind that they actually had. So they had this badge created. And you can see it's in this leather case. And the outside of the leather case has Elvis's name on it. And the photo that you saw that Gene had, you could see Elvis holding this in his hand, in his right hand. And I'll zoom in on the picture right now so you can see that. So if you get a chance, come see Gene. Thank you.